Good morning, Stampers. Happy Friday. Welcome to the final Facebook Live for this week, where we are focusing on the In Bloom Bundle. Okay, let's see here. There we go. All right. Okay, so we're a little early today. Normally I come on on Fridays at 11, but I thought I would just keep it consistent all the way through the week. So 9.30 every day this week. Um, and I'm kind of sad that this is the last day of our daily Facebook Lives, but we'll be back again, or I'll be back again the last week of, the last full week of, of what month are we? March. <laughs> um, and we'll be focusing on a different product. So it's kind of fun, something to look forward to. Good morning, Kim. Good morning, Kim. <laughs> Good morning, Denise. Welcome, welcome. Good morning, Dixie. All right, my name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Canada. And this week I have been going live every day featuring this In Bloom bundle from, the, from Stampin' Up! It's in the January to June mini catalog. And um, it coordinates beautifully with the Paper Blooms DSP that is available for free during celebration, which is only good until February 28th. So this is your reminder to check that celebration catalog, make sure that you have everything that you want. This is something that you can pick up for free with a $60 purchase. Um, and then there's some items in there that you can pick up for free with a $120 purchase. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Elaine and Joy and Karen and Alice. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. All right, today we are gonna create a fun background. And so some of you may remember this card that I shared maybe a week ago, maybe a little bit longer. And um, I loved it because I used the messages dies to cut out all of these little um, label shapes and then I popped them up using dimensionals and created a fun background. So I thought when I was looking at these dies, I thought you could definitely do something like that with these dies as well. So that's what we're gonna do this morning. This is my new favorite background to make is kind of getting creative with your dies and creating a background that looks like that. And it's so fun. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Our card base today is Knight of Navy. So we're going with something other than white. I think we've been white almost all week. So this is just a standard size, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I'm glad you've enjoyed this week, Karen. It's kind of fun, something a little bit different, something to look forward to, right? And okay, I've got a four and a quarter by five and a half inch, so a quarter sheet of navy as well. And that's what I'm gonna use to cut out my background. Uh, let's see what else I've got here. Okay, and I need to die cut from this. Just having a look, making sure I've got, we're gonna do our die cutting first. Okay, all right, let's bring in, I'm gonna bring in my platform so that I can lay them all out. We can fit both on here. So all I'm gonna do is I am basically just going to position as many dies as I can on here. This guy's gonna go on here. Good morning, Betty. Good morning, Susan and Tracy. So I'll start with the larger ones and then kind of fill in the smaller ones, fill in the gaps with the smaller ones. And just because I put them on here in this configuration doesn't mean I need to stick with that configuration. I can reposition them when I go to stick them onto my card base. I'm just trying to get as many things cut out as I can from this one piece of paper. Okay, let's see. Let's try a few more small flowers. Squeeze this guy in there. I got these little ones. Okay, that looks good. All right, I don't really want these single leaves and there's no room for those big flowers. Oh, the other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to cut, 
I love this little bow that's in this set and I haven't used it all week so I thought I had to use it I have to use it today okay so we've got all of our dies all set up let's bring in our machine oh your dies are arriving today Susan awesome what else is in that big brown box that you've got coming I've got an order coming today too All right. Okay. So we've got this. And look at this bow. Let me pop out the pieces here. It's like a it's like a double layer. Let me put it on a piece of white so you can see. Look how cute that is. So cute. And for those of you who don't like tying bows, this is the perfect solution. Okay, so now at this point, if this was exactly how I wanted it to appear on my card front, um, there is something called, oh my gosh, I just drew it blank. It's not saran wrap, cling, not cling wrap. Oh my goodness. Okay, somebody help me out. Oh. oh my goodness, I can't remember what it's called. Okay, but anyways, it is this stuff that you can put on and then what you can do is you can flip it over and it, everything will stick to it so that it keeps everything in place. Okay, and then you would you could put dimensionals on here um, and let me think how you would do it. There is a way to do it without physically doing it. It's hard to kind of explain, but because I'm not keeping this in the order and because I don't have press and seal, thank you, Sue, press and seal. Because I've packed my press and seal, I can't do it that way with this. Um, but there is a way that you can do it so that you keep everything in line or in order so that it makes it easy to put it onto your card front. Okay, but because like if I had thought about this a little bit more and didn't just randomly place these, um, I wouldn't have put these two leaves right close together. So I'm just going to just reposition them on my card base the way I want them. So I'm just kind of poking everything out and it's going to take me a little bit of time to put the dimensionals on the back, which is okay. We can chat while we do that. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces. And I've got some dimensionals and I'm going to grab some mini dimensionals as well for those smaller pieces. Let's poke these out of here. Oh, that butterfly bijou DSP is beautiful. So beautiful. You're going to love it, Susan. Okay. All right. Grab our card front and we are going to add dimensionals, but I'm not going to peel off the backing until I'm sure of how I want to position them. So I'm just going to randomly place these on here, uh, starting with the larger images for the larger die cuts. This one I'll probably use mini glue dots. Kim, if you, um, if you do a search on YouTube, um, if you search press and seal and card making or something like that, you'll find a ton of videos that show you tricks on using press and seal in your card making when you're doing backgrounds with lots of pieces and things like that. It'll show you exactly how to do it. I'll have to drop that, that down and do a video maybe once we're settled in our new place, when I have everything unpacked, because it is quite handy. Let's see, let's have this guy going this way. All right. So, and it, it looks kind of odd at first until you get some of the, the smaller ones in there, it looks kind of forced. The other thing that you can do is you can have some that go off the edge because that makes it look like it's pre-patterned paper. 
and it was cut down to fit. So I'm just basically filling these in wherever. Yeah, visuals are, are helpful. I, I really would not do it justice trying to explain how it goes together or how it works. I'm a very visual person as well. Okay, so I know that my label is going to go right around here, so I don't necessarily need too much in this particular spot. If there's a big gap there, that's fine. I think I'm going to go ahead and start peeling some of these off so I don't have to hold the card down too much. I don't want everything to move. So what does everybody have planned for the weekend? Anything fun? We are, um, my goal is to have the, our theater room packed up by the end of this weekend because we, we ended up having to sell a lot of furniture. We got rid of the last last bit of furniture that we needed to which was our phone booth which I was so sad about but I think it went to a great home it went to a cafe in Edmonton and she's going to put it on display there so I'm super excited that it went to somebody like that where people can lots of people will be able to appreciate it because it was such a unique piece so anyways um, our theater room we sold our theater room chairs and so we don't use our theater room anymore so this weekend, my plan is to pack up everything that's in the theater room, box it all up. That's going to be a place where we store our boxes, and um, and I'm going to clean the walls. I figure if I tackle one room a week, yeah, I should be pretty close to being done and not have to do a ton of it right at the end. So I'll just have to do touch-ups. All right, let's see, that looks good like that. Oh, Betty, you're making masks. Oh, Tracy, that sounds like fun. We got some fresh snow today, that's good. That will help sledding. I don't know, we didn't get much though, did we? I haven't really looked outside yet. Okay, I feel like these two flowers look too... Oh, I think it'll be fine. I'll just stick them down. Okay, now these tiny little ones, I'm gonna fill in some of the gaps with these. Let's put this guy there. So this isn't a quick background. It does take some time and a little bit of patience. So Susan, she only crafts on the weekend. Ah, so you have to pick your product. Well, if you're getting this stamp set or these dies today, you should play with these dies. Okay, one more. Let's, let's save that and just see how things look. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it over and just trim off anything that is overhanging. So you could do this idea for a background with any number of dies. I thought it would be really pretty with snowflakes at Christmas, or even if you had that poinsettia die. Cutting, die cutting a bunch of poinsettias would be really nice. Oh, let's do this side. Okay, all right, there we go. So we do have a gap there, but that's okay. Like I said, we've got, I've got a little cluster that's gonna go over top of that. 
Okay, so I have got a petal pink two inch circle and that is gonna go right here. So let's add a little bit of adhesive on here as well for the raised bits. Just like that. And then we're gonna do some stamping on this piece and I don't have I don't have my stamp out. I don't even, oh, here's my stamp set. And I don't have my inks. I posted, <laughs> I posted a picture five minutes before I went live. My desk was covered with um, stuff that I've been using for my snail mail mini album class that I've got in March. So I really want to finish it so that I can do a flip through video. Hopefully today, if not, it'll be tomorrow. It's turning out so, so cute. The foundation pages are done. I just need to finish up embellishing. And it's so adorable. So I'll post a link to all that, the information on that class um, in the description above after the video. Okay, so we're gonna use Night of Navy ink and we're gonna stamp the greeting, you are amazing. Because who wouldn't like a card telling them that they're amazing? There we go. All right. Oh, Carol, you're live. Normally you're not on here live. That's good. It's been a crazy week, hey? All right, this guy is going to go on using dimensionals as well. Normally I don't put double layers of dimensionals, but this card is full of dimension. And we'll pop that on here, just like that. Our little bow is gonna go right on here with a mini glue dot. Betty, I have not forgotten. You wanted me to call you about Paper Pumpkin. I, I have it on my calendar, so I will call you today. Okay, and then we're going to add one of the elegant faceted gems to the inside. Well, exactly, right? The card doesn't even have to say you are amazing in order to be happy to receive a handmade card. Handmade card is always nice to get in the mail. I'm gonna use one of the clear ones. Pop that right in the center. Look at how cute that bow is. My gosh, I love it. Okay, and then we are going to take a piece of the pattern paper and we're gonna fussy cut it and that's what I'm gonna use as my accent. So if you don't like to fussy cut, you can use the dies and cut a flower, but I don't mind fussy cutting and these are easy enough to fussy cut. Now when I fussy cut, here are some tips. You move the paper and not the scissors. So you can see that my left hand is moving the paper rather than moving the scissors. You'll get a much crisper cut or cleaner cut if you move the paper rather than the scissors. And then I'm also leaving a, a tiny white border around the edges. If you try to cut right along the edge of the image, where the image stops, like where the printing stops, you're gonna notice your flaws a lot more than if you leave yourself a little bit of a white border. So, and it's just ever so slight. It might be a 16th of an inch in some areas because it's not perfectly even because you will never get it perfectly even. Um, it might be a little bit less, and in some areas it might be a little bit more. But those are, those are my tips on fussy cutting. I find it very relaxing. I will often have things upstairs with me when I'm watching TV and just kind of fussy cut. Okay, so that's gonna go right there. So I'm gonna add a dimensional here, and then I'll add a little bit of adhesive just for where it overlaps. We're gonna tuck it under 
just like that. Okay, so there's the outside of our card. We could add, I don't know, what do you guys think? Should we add some more of these? You know what, I do need to fill in that spot. Let's, let's tuck this on there. Do we, should we add some, some more of those faceted gems on here? Or should we leave it as is? I should have cut those in half. Okay, I'll let you guys comment. And then let's bring in the pieces that we need for the inside. So inside, I've got a layer of Rococo Rose and a layer of white and a little scrap. It's about an inch of the DSP that's going to go across and then some more of this Rococo Rose ribbon. So I'll just add some adhesive and add the ribbon just like we did yesterday, peeking out from underneath. And then we'll trim. I think this is a bit too long as well. This one might need to be trimmed. We'll add this. On here. And appears that my measurements are a little off. Let's trim this down just a little bit. Oh, are you watching while you're working, Susan? Okay, Betty, I'll call you this afternoon. Okay, that's a little bit, that's a little bit better. And we'll add this, oh, you know what? Let's add this piece first. Because I think it needs to be trimmed. Yes, it does. All right, let's grab some bigger scissors. More gems, okay. There you go, I gave you an idea for something to try tomorrow, Tracy. And you can do lots, like you, it doesn't have to be just die cuts, you can do stamped images too. Stamped and then punched or stamped and then die cut. The sky's the limit. I've got one that I'm gonna share with you guys next week that uses the new butterfly butterfly um, bundle that's available. Look how pretty that is on the inside. Okay, let's add some more gems here. We can kind of tuck them in to some of these little gaps. There we go. These white bits are driving me crazy. I need to put a smaller dimensional on there. Let's see if we can cut this in half and still use it. I'm wondering, so far I've only done it where all of these pieces are in one color. So tone on tone. So this one was sea foam on sea foam. This one's navy on navy. I wonder what it would look like if you did multiple colors. There's something for somebody to try. Okay, yeah, I like it better when you can't see the, the little white peeking out from behind. There we go. Okay, there's our card, all done. And the envelope, what are we gonna do with the envelope? Maybe just repeat this pattern paper, which let's see if I can find my pattern paper. Scraps, see if I have a scrap of it. Here we go. All right, look at all those fabulous images that you could cut out of that. I love this flower. Okay, let's do, that's not six. We're gonna do two and a half inches. by 
by six. We're gonna keep it simple and just do the envelope flap. And then once I'm done this, I'll pull in all of the projects that I've created this week so that you can have a look at all of them. All right. There we go. I know those butterflies are, I think they're gonna be a huge hit. They are so fun to play with. Okay. Trim around this guy. So just a reminder, um, you have until the end of the month if you want to place a $60 order um, to qualify for celebration, because celebration ends on Sunday. Um, and if you order through my online store using this host code, I will send you all of the pre-cut supplies to make the cards that I've created this week, as well as a PDF with all the measurements and links to the videos for an easy reference. So I'm just scooting everything out of the way so I can pull in everything in. Okay, so this was day five. This was day four. This was day three. This was day two. And then this was day one. Let's do this. Do they all fit? Let's see. So we have a nice Look how nice that looks. It's so pretty. What a great gift idea this would be. You could package this up in one of our acetate boxes, all four of the cards, and then package this up separately, and it would be a great coordinating gift idea because everything coordinates. That's one of the great things when you pull the colors right from the DSP and you do everything in that kind of color combination. I love it. They're so pretty. It was super fun to really dig into this bundle. You know, I'm really enjoying these um, daily Facebook Lives every month because it forces me to try to come up with different ways to use product. Um, and just so that you guys know, if you want a heads up on what I'll be using next month, I'm going to be using, I've got it set aside. So I'll be using Opal Rounds and the Friendly Flamingo bundle which is so cute. I love flamingos. I've got a thing for flamingos and pineapples. So um, I had to buy this one. So this is what we're going to be using at the end of March. So it'll be the last full week of March because March ends kind of midweek, I believe. So it'll be the, the week prior to that. All right, just to give you guys a heads up if you want to plan for that so that you can craft along. Um, and uh, I think that is it. Just a one last reminder, celebration ends on Sunday. Um, and remember that there's a few different ways that you can take advantage of celebration. So you can spend $60 and get a product for free. You can host a qualifying workshop or place a qualifying order and get that um, punch party for free. And then there's also the join opportunity. So if you wanna take advantage of the best deal in the catalog, which is always the best way to go. Um, you can purchase the starter kit and it is $165 worth of product of your choice. You pay $135, no shipping, no GST, and Stampin' Up! will include five packages of 6x6 DSP from the brand new upcoming catalog in your starter kit. So that's an extra almost $100 value added to your starter kit. So it's a fabulous deal. There is absolutely no requirement to do what I do to take advantage of that, you can, you can simply enjoy the discount on your crafting products, or you can you know, sell to some of your friends and family if you want, or you can, you can host classes. It's completely up to you, or you can do what I do and you can start doing things online. It's completely up to you, but there is no obligation. It's, it's risk-free, so it really, 
I, I always say it's the best deal in the catalog and it doesn't hurt to give it a try. All right. So if you have questions on that, just let me know. And I hope you all have a fabulous weekend and I will see my VIPs next Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.